All right, what's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Uh, book is entitled Lessons from a Non Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below. As usual, um, this video is entitled The Journey Out of Poverty. Um, you know, people don't think about what it's the things that go on when, you, when you're getting out of poverty, and I think people talk about the crabs in a barrel mentality where. And I'm using extremes to some degree. Um, when you're in the in poverty, the crabs in the barrel try to pull you back in. When when you get out of poverty, the other barrel tries to push you back down. So I just want to put out like both sides of it. So you know, rule number one: like when you're young and you're coming up in poverty, the one thing you don't necessarily have is a team. That knows how to get you out of poverty because most of your family and most of your friends' families are adults who pretty much know poverty. So a lot of times they're not the best people to teach you how to get out. Some can teach you by their mistakes, but the vast majority of them can't teach you how to actually escape poverty. So it's trial and error to, to a degree. And you know, people say you know if you if you go to school, study hard, you know, get a good education that that can get you out of there. True, but <clears throat> there's other things in, that are involved in that process that I'm talking about in this video. Uh, on the flip side of that coin, when you get out of poverty, you have to take the same ideology that some of the people where you're at that are not in poverty have the same mindset but it's reversed to try to do things to trigger you to put, get you put back into poverty okay because sometimes you know in the hood you say people don't want to see you win so they sabotage you when you get out the hood people don't want to see you at the same place they are at life so they also try to sabotage you because they have a team of people who probably um, help them get to the point where they're, at, where they're at or they may have been richer than they were prior to being a, when they were children but not as adults or they might just be in the same class and you being at the same spot they are coming from where you came from is uh, it creates an insecurity problem with people so you gotta take that into consideration um now you got a different part of it. You know, on a journey, you have people who want to be your best friend so they could be your worst enemy. And what I mean by that is, these are the people who want to get to know you to sabotage you so you never leave poverty. And even if you study hard and work hard, this is, you know, about the company you keep, the circle of your friends or and sometimes more so not your personal friends but your friends friends you might have to watch out for because like i said like somebody can see something in you that you don't see in yourself so instead of uh cheering for you you know come hang out with me come party with me Come do these things with me. Or, you know, I'm, I'm just, just take a ride with me. I ain't doing nothing. And then they get you involved in something that, that is detrimental to your life or success going in the future. And that's a problem. Now, the other, the journey out of poverty is when you're on the other side of that. People will be your best friend to be your worst enemy. Oh, they, 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 I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad where you came from. They want to get to know your, your whole life story and how you're living and, you know, how'd you make it there? What school you went to? You know, uh, how, did you did you have to pay student loans? How, which, where's your job at? They want to know all your information so if one day they can anonymously uh, maybe get you fired. <laughs> You know, or sabotage your business, you know, so you, you don't um, become more successful than them. You know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because you got you to gotta know both. You got to know both sides. 
uh, you know, on that same journey, you have to take into consideration people's, how can I say this? When you're getting out of poverty, one of the worst things are people's intentions. You know, and what I mean by that is somebody will ride your co coattails to success, but they can't get rid of that mindset that sabotages everything. And they might not even be trying to sabotage you as a person, but they just can't get out of the mindset of, of the, the poverty mindset is I'm going to do this dirt and when I make a whole lot of money. I'm going to uh, turn it around and, you know, and, and, and reimburse everybody I cross. It doesn't work. And they find, and, and you wind up dealing with a person who has good intentions but has horrible actions. And then, and then you get on the other side of that coin, you know, where because you don't know how to maintain uh, a better lifestyle and, and you take on people who want you to just trust them and they, they, they'll show you how to how these other people maneuver to keep money, they'll do the same thing, but you know, they'll, they'll bleed you dry because they have that same poverty mindset but it's really but theirs is just into greed like they don't care and what I mean by that is let me let me make an example when you when you're in a poor neighborhood a person will stab people in the back and cut people's throats and burn bridges and say you know what but when I get it together when I hit this real big lick I swear I'm gonna pay everybody back but they burnt all bridges and nobody trusts them nobody wants to mess with them so when you get in these um, higher, these when you get up the class in a different class, you have people who are like, well, you know, yeah, I scammed them out of ten thousand, but that, that's that's no money to them. Twenty thousand is no money to them. Five thousand is no money to them. Two thousand is no money to them. Oh, I got them for fifty thousand, but everybody got money. They're not gonna. It's okay. They're perpetual thieves, like. There is no um, conscious about when I hit a certain number, I'm gonna try to make this right. No, they they are haters for real. Like they feel like they could scam you out of money because you got it, and you know you gotta watch out for that on your journey out of poverty because people use your life and insecurities against you. Um, touching on that part. You know, when you leave in poverty, there's certain things you wanted but you couldn't afford. And on one end, being poor lets you know who's on your side when you have nothing, you, you know. But it, the insecurities it may breed about the things you wanted out of life, um, might catch up with you, or sometimes it catch up catches up with the people around you because if you got something they may feel entitled to get what you have because it's the closest they feel like they can get to um getting something been around people who you know driven people's cars because they couldn't have it they couldn't afford it they wrecked those cars taking people's you know jewelry their rolexes and just walked around like it was there. Some things got lost, some things got stolen, some things they just kept. And on the flip side, you have people who make it a, their business to overcharge you because you don't know the prices of things when you get to another class. Oh, don't you wanna, you know, I remember you when you said you were broke and you couldn't afford shoes. These are the best shoes that are ever made and they only cost, $1,500 for some loafers and you, you buying them like, yeah, I finally, I, I came up, I could do this. You're wasting your money. You know, oh man, what, you want to look real good, man? This suit only costs you, you know, $3,000. 
Oh, it's the finest material. Look, don't do that to yourself. You nickel and dime yourself back into poverty or bad situation because you're buying a bunch of sometimes nice but worthless stuff at an overpriced price. And, and, and if you're not uh, around people long enough and around that environment long enough, you won't know until... Uh, You are like everybody doesn't need everything and I think you know that's the one thing like and I'm, and I'm gonna get out of here when I say this because I should have said this earlier or said it in a different way uh, your fa your circle in poverty may have their own lifestyle agenda if you're out of poverty and you can't be the person to give them the lifestyle that they dream of. Um, and when you meet people who are outside of poverty, you can't allow them to benefit off of your kindness because that's how other people come up off of you. Don't you think you need to take care of this person or take care of that person? I know a person to call. You want to talk to a realtor? I can, I can, get, you, I can get you a good deal on a car. You know, I could, you know, oh, I, I, I know just the, the stockbroker. I know that, nah, nah. Because you, you're going to spin your wheels in, in the wrong direction. You're just going to spin your wheels bald on that one. Um, because, like I said, on that journey out, you're not, you're not responsible for everybody's lifestyle. You got to let people stand on their own two feet. You know, it's nothing wrong with helping people. But help you first, you know. And then when you're good and in a good position to help, then help other people. Then take other people's um, advice or or, the, or use their network to get to to other people. So you know that's all. We out.